Uh, you've had a lot of practice time here the last you know, five or six days with some of that fast start is maybe some pent up emotion to get out there and, and, and get going. Yeah, you know, obviously you want to, you know, always start off well and, you know, get going and have a good balance offensively. And obviously we wanted to uh, establish uh, our big guys and, and get the ball inside and really try to attack them there and, and just kind of see how they play it. And I, I thought our guys did a good job of, you know, being aggressive but being ready to play. And we obviously didn't shoot the ball great. Uh, but we still had a you know a really good game, and I thought our, our defense in, in a couple of stretches was tough. But for the most part, I thought we did a good job of trying to take them out of what they wanted to do. You seen any different with Zach in the way he started the past two games relative to how he had been starting games? Yeah, he made him. He made his shots. That's like, simple. Huh? He gets it, yeah for him it is. For him, if he can work to establish low post position, you know, not everything's going to be a dunk or a layup. It's going to be like a five, six footer. Like he has to feel confident in, in making those. And then when he does miss, you know, some of those big <clears throat> shots at five to six feet instead of dunks, you know, he, he's got to feel comfortable to go back to it. You know, not just you know look at it like it's a, it's a failure. Like don't, I always try to talk to them about that, especially him. Like don't get frustrated when you miss good shots. Jaden had a lot of success off the dribble. So did Isaiah. You were able to do a lot of stuff off the bounce against them in the, in the first half. Was that the way they were guarding you, or was that an emphasis kind of coming in? No, just, you know, especially in the open court, if you have space, you can really look to attack and uh, get in the paint. You know, whether we're, we're posting up or we're driving the basketball or we're cutting, you know, we're trying to get the ball to the paint as much as possible, just like everybody else is, you know, trying to do. But I thought when you can get stops and you can get in transition more, Things open up a little bit. Obviously, Jaden had a couple uh, transition threes, you know, where he just took it. And I thought in the second half he settled for those instead of really trying to break the defense down and get layups and get to the rim and create for others. What would you say was the original key to that twenty-three to four run in the first half? Getting stops more than anything, you know. And now, um, you know, we had some effort plays on the glass, even though they out rebounded us in the first half. I thought our free throw stunts from Sasha. And uh, Mason Gill, so I love you know that effort at that time. That was kind of throughout the game. I think we had three or four of those uh, <coughs> uh, plays. But no, getting off to a good start, making some shots, getting in the paint, getting stops. Just that combination, um, establishing our big guys, like I talked about. Just a combination of all those things. How proud of you? How proud of you? How proud are you of your defense today? Is this what you expect out of them? Yeah, I mean. We're, we're, we're making some strides, but in, in no stretch of the imagination have we arrived. You know, there, there's still breakdowns out there. We, we have to you know, do a better job of containing the dribble. When we kept the ball out of the paint, good things happened. When they got into the paint, you know, now um, you know, we had breakdowns, and now they're, they're getting the guy diving. They're getting the three out there. They're getting to the free throw line a little bit. And, and, and so like, we just got to keep working on containing the dribble and doing a good job as a team of helping each other. I might be imagining this, but it seems like the last few games there's been maybe a little more muted celebrations and things when positive things happen. Do you see like more of a business-like type of demeanor um, from your guys for the last two games, or am I dreaming this? I don't know if you're dreaming or not. It's it's something when you coach the game, sometimes you don't see everything. Um, so that's not something that's registered with me. But, um, you know, I, I just want them to understand how hard it is to win one game in the Big Ten. We, we keep talking about it. You know, like it's so hard to go to Penn State and win. Like this was a hard game for us. Uh, the next game's going to be a hard game for us. Like every game's hard. Don't like don't celebrate. You know, winning. Like like you should feel good about winning the game, but you also have to understand you got another one coming. And you know, you just have to keep that discipline. You know, winning will soften you a little bit. Where you get on edge after you lose the game. We just got to be able to stay on edge no matter what happened in the previous game. Coach, um, talk about something not on the stat sheet. Um, I sit down on the floor, I take pictures, and I see Trey Young passing. What's it like for you to see a big man like that to have those skills right. that can just do what he does? Well, I think it's good because you're you're starting to see some experienced guys that have played with him. Um, understand that they just move without the basketball. Caleb made a good cut late in the game. Mason made a good cut in the first half. Um, Isaiah understands that when Trey Young has it about slipping and and trying to get to the rim and get an easy one. And, um, so it's important for us to have movement when he has the basketball and use him as a weapon. If we stand and look at him and we don't you know, get good action, 
then you know we're, we're taking away the value of his ability to pass. Uh, but no, it's a it's a weapon very few people have, especially when it offsets you know the guy he subs in for. You know you got to deal with Zach Eady down there, and then now you got to deal with him out there passing the basketball. Uh, it's it's a 180 flip where where guys have to really like concentrate on like pressuring him and making it hard for him to pass. Then have to worry about Zach coming in there and getting the ball at the rim. Can you just kind of speak to the positive things Brandon and Caleb both did for you off the bench, kind of given their respective circumstances here the last couple of years? Right. Well, it, it's going to be you know it's going to be difficult for somebody or a couple people in every game. It just is. Like you know, you, you, tonight you, you get some minutes and you balance things out, but um, you know we're just going to go with the guys that can help us in that game. Mm -hmm. And some of it's matchups. You know, some of it's matchups, and it's a little bit different. Uh, but it's also kind of letting the game evolve each game evolve, and then being able to make those decisions, not going in with kind of that predetermined thought. Like that's something for me that I don't, I don't, when I do that, I don't think I'm helping the team. Just kind of wait to see who's playing well, who's ready that game, who matches up well. Uh, but it was great to see Caleb um, knock down some shots, you know, make some plays. Um, it's hard, it's hard when you miss and you're out a little bit, then you're trying to get back into the swing of things, especially on the defensive end. I think that's probably the hardest piece mm -hmm. Um, for anybody just to get into the game and feel comfortable there when your minutes are less than they used to be. I thought Brandon did a good job. Obviously, he made a couple shots, but um, he got a couple steals, a couple <coughs> deflections, um, was around the ball, and, and, and was solid. You know, him coming in and um, getting like, he has two steals and making two threes, gets four rebounds. You know, it's a pretty positive line. How do you keep Jake on edge? I mean, he, was, he was in there earlier talking about team being disrespected. After you know, you guys lost a couple of games, and mm -hmm. it just feels like there's a big old chip on his shoulder right now. I mean, yeah. How do you how do you keep that on him so he has the kind of energy and he plays the way he yeah. did tonight? Well, it's it's part of it. Like when you you stump a little bit, and you lose a couple of games, and um, you know it's it, it's part of kind of getting off the canvas and, and fighting. You know, that's it's competition. <clears throat> there's always somebody out there better than you. You know, there's always a team out there that's better than you. There's always a coach out there that's better than you. Like, you know, just keep it going. Like, just keep it going. But also understand it's it's process-based. Like, you know, do your job, play hard, have fun with it, and just, you know, learn from things and be honest with yourself. When you do those types of things, like, you know, good things are going to happen. Younger guys, that's a little bit harder. Like, you know, you get a little emotional with it. And just like, you know, don't get away from what you're supposed to do. Like you hear about it all the time in competitive sports, but it's just so true. It's like do your job, like do what you're supposed to do, like but also, you know, be engaged, you know, at all times. Like when you're engaged at all times, especially like in your workouts and your practices and the film session. Now when you come to games, man, it's fun. It's fun because it's just your habit. You know, you can build bad habits and you can build good habits. You're, everyone has habits. Like you know what you know what are yours? We're just trying to grow those guys, not just Jaden. Just grow their habits and keep getting better. Maybe you take a couple losses here and there, but the whole thing is to be ready to roll once March hits. I hope this isn't too redundant in that question, but he seems like he's done a good job defensively the last two games. What have you seen? Yeah, he's done a there? better job. We just had more of a concentrated effort. You know, it's not about him guarding somebody that's, you know, really good or whatever just because it's him versus that guy. It's like, hey, he's a good player, and if you do your job and, you know, you make it hard on him, you're going to help our team win. And it's just – you know, is he a two-way player? You know, he defines that in his consistency in, in what he does out on the court in games. Like, you know, are you a two-way player? Do you stop really, really good players? And do you help us on the offensive thing? I think he's going in that direction. Obviously, he's very, very talented. But we just got to stay on him. Like, we just got to stay on him in those areas because it's so important. Because he can guard a lot of people, but he, he can't have those breakdowns. And he's done a much better job in Penn State and Nebraska <coughs> of minimizing those breakdowns. Last one here. I'm going to go back to uh, Travion and his passing ability real quick. Was that something that he's always been able to do, or was that really developed this offseason? No, he's always been able to pass. He came here as a good passer. He just had to kind of had to get in shape. You know, he had to you know beat somebody out. He had to get get himself in there first of all. But no, he's always been able to pass. Once he kind of got the feel of everything. And then some of the stuff we run, especially when people switch, you know, can open up stuff for him. But he's he's very very tiny. The thing that happens with guys that can see the floor like that, sometimes they see things that don't exist. 
like you know he'll thread the needle a little bit too much. He'll make a wraparound pass, and you'll be like, hey, you're you're one on one in the post, just score, you know. But like it's it's a great quality, just like I talked about bad habits. Like his unselfishness is very contagious, and like you can get some contagious things that are really really good and that can really help your team. His ability to cheer on the sideline for Zach, like you know, it's frustrating. Like you let him stay in this game for 30 minutes, like he's gonna do really well. You know, but Zach also would have had 35 points tonight if I kept him in the game. And so, like, you know, but his unselfishness and his energy right there, those those two pieces right there, that, that's, that's contagious and it helps our team. It really helps our team. So, thank you. Thank you, Coach.